John's with us in Birmingham. Hey, John, what's up? Hey, Dave, how's it going? Better than I deserve. How can I help? I hear you. Hey, Dave. Um, so we have a um, aggregate hauling business here. My question is, so I quit a pretty lucrative job a year and a half ago to work with the family business. Why? Um, well, I was kind of dissatisfied with my previous job, and my dad was just like, hey, man, I've been asking you just come work with me and try it out. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, what were you making before? Uh, 80, 80, 83. And what are you being paid at the new bu- at the family business? Last year, I did about 45. Okay. So far, Dad, I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, this is why I came to you, sir. Well, you signed up for it, but good God, man. Oh, I know. I know. Now, quality of life, I say, you know, I come home in a better mood, even though I'm working longer hours, but uh, I'm I'm sure my my plight is obvious here. Okay, so what... You, you said you do a little bit of everything, but what does your day consist of? Tell me some of the the three main things you spend your time on. Yeah, so um, start off bright and early, about 6 o'clock I get there. I hop in a truck. I uh, run deliveries, run routes. And then about 3.30, I stop, do office work. And then if there's any mechanical repairs, I work on those. What's the uh, what's office work consist of? Um, invoicing, running payroll. Uh, we do have a bookkeeper that does more of the in-depth, so I just mason, mainly invoicing. Okay, so you're doing uh, receivables, and the bookkeeper's doing payables. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you're the only one doing that? Uh, my father is doing it as well, um, but... It, it, it kind of varies week per week depending okay. on what's how, going on. Okay, how many of the 12 people are drivers? Ten. So a bookkeeper and your dad? So the book, I'm sorry, the bookkeeper is a, um, she's contracted. Oh, okay. So she's okay. not an employee of us. I got you. She has, a, okay. she has her own business. All right, who's the two that are not drivers? Um, that would be my father and my mother. And what do they do at the business? Um, my father does everything. He will drive when there's a driver down um, and does a lot of the other paperwork. And I guess he could say sales. Um, he's the face of it. You know, he's the one that built their reputation. Um, my mother, she is just kind of there. What's that mean? She gets paid for sitting on her butt? What do you mean? Um, essentially, yes, sir. Um, uh, <laughs> she's... <laughs> <laughs> She's got ownership in it. Is the uh, is the deal? Yeah, I mean, you can be an owner and not be at work. Uh, I guess we'll we'll put it at that. I mean, she is a W two employee, even though she owns part of it. We don't do any kind of profit sharing either. Okay, um, you made three million gross. You said right? Uh, we did that in revenue. In revenue, yeah. And what's your net? Do you know? Um, not off the top of my head. No, I'd have to dive into that. Okay. Is there a P&L being produced monthly? I wish I knew what you were talking about. Okay. A profit and loss statement showing the revenue that came in that month minus the expenses that were paid that month equals the profit for the month. Yes, sir. There is. There's one. Um, I just don't look at those pretty often. Okay. That would tell you what your profit is, in okay. other words. Okay. you would, If you, you were looking at it and if it was being produced monthly... The bookkeeper may be doing that on contract. They may be producing that monthly for you. They're certainly doing it once a year for taxes. Okay, so, yeah. And uh, what, what what did you do before for $83,000? Um, I worked as, um, I was actually in the service department at a Freightliner dealership. We were just a high-volume Freightliner dealer. And you did what in the service department? Um, I was an advisor and um, an estimator. Okay. All right. How old are you? 27. Okay. All right. Um, what's a truck driver make that works there? Oh, anywhere 19 to 21 an hour. More than you. Um, now, that's a part of it, too. You know, we, he gave me the whole speech of you have to start at the bottom. And, yeah. 
there's a few we're actually hiring some right now in the process of hiring some and the amount we're talking is more than i make okay all right um all right well i think you if i were in your shoes okay i would sit down with your dad and maybe your mom too and at the office not a what not a, not a, not at the kitchen table of the family but at the office and have a professional business meeting and okay. it sounds something like this guys this is not working out i enjoy what i'm doing but the and i enjoy being here but the pay is ridiculous and I don't understand where we're going with this because I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, we've got to start putting some systems in place to grow this business. And, um, you know, and I should be paid at least what other employees are paid that do the same job at a minimum. Okay. So the rule, John, in family business that we teach people in family business and that we adhere to in Ramsey is family members that work in the business do not make more than other people that do the exact same job. And family members that work in the business do not make less than other people that work there. Now, if a family member is an owner, they can participate in the profits. That's different. That'd be like your mom. Okay, but if you have a job, like, so Rachel Cruz, my daughter is a Ramsey personality and the Ramsey personalities are paid based on their sales of their books, based on uh, appearances that they do and based on uh, speaking fees and other things, okay? And they get percentages on each of those, royalties on each of those. Rachel gets the exact same percentages as the other Ramsey personalities. Now, she may sell less books or more books than one of those, so she might make actual more money, but she has the exact same job and uh, as the other Ramsey personalities and the exact same pay. Rachel is also one of the owners of Ramsey. And whether she's a Ramsey personality or not, by being an owner, she gets some of the profits. If she didn't work here, she'd still get that, okay? That's, you separate ownership from your day job. And at the day job, you should be paid, everyone there, including your dad, including your mom, only what the job pays, not less, not more. And so if your job, and dad and mom, I need you to help me define what my job is, okay? It seems like I'm doing some accounting and some truck driving, mainly truck driving. And so when I'm driving the truck, I should be paid at least what truck drivers are being paid. If you're unwilling to do that, then we're going to have to call this and I'm going to have to go get a job. That's what I would do if I were in your shoes. Because I think your dad's making a mistake. I got you. And he, he should clearly define what your job is so we can tell if you're doing it or not. If we hold you accountable for competence, okay? And he clearly define what you're doing, what is your job and your job description, okay? Well, we need you to drive truck until 3.30, and then we need you to take care of these accounting functions, uh, the invoicing, okay? And uh, so a part-time bookkeeper doing invoicing makes this, and a part-time truck driver makes this per hour. And so we're going to put those hourly rates together, and that is your job description and your compensation plan. And that's a professionally run business. And your dad should be doing that. He should do that with everybody in the business, by the way. Everybody that works there, including you. And you shouldn't overpay people, and you shouldn't underpay people. Now, so the owner's kid doesn't get taken advantage of, and the owner's kid doesn't get a free ride on lack of competence, and the owner's kid doesn't get paid more because he's the owner's kid. He gets paid for the job he does. Now, when you become an owner someday, you can participate in the profits, but only then. Right, okay. And so I don't know. I think you guys um, had very different pictures in your minds as to where this was going to go and what it was going to look like. And you yeah. are living in your dad's picture, not your picture. That's why you called me. Is that right? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 When Sorry, you said, I'm going to take this job, you had one thing in your head, and he had this in his head. John's going to... Now, I don't mind his statement of you're going to start at the bottom. My son, Daniel, is the president of this company. I'm the CEO. He started at the bottom. He started in ad sales. Actually, when he was 16, he had to paint the stairwell because he needed money for a car. And I paid him what I would have paid a painter to paint the stairwell, which was overpaying him because he sucked at painting. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, I paid him by the job, and it took the poor guy forever because he didn't know what he was doing. But anyway, we finally got the stairwell painted, and he got the money for the car at 16 years old. But, so he's been, never been afraid of hard work. I've never been afraid of starting a Ramsey kid at the bottom. There's no silver spoons, right? So then when he came out of college and decided to come here, he started in ad sales here. And he got paid the same commission that the other ad salespeople got paid. And the first year, he was the worst salesman we had. By the time he finished, a couple of years later, he was the top revenue producer in the company. He learned his skills. And I didn't hold him back and say, now you just need to uh, start at the bottom and make no money. No, you start at the bottom, you start, take that job, and you do that job before we can talk about doing something else. That's starting at the bottom. But it doesn't mean you have to be underpaid. Now, you don't need to get paid 83 just because you made 83 before unless this job pays 83. Right. But I think you're underpaid because I think you're paying your truck drivers more than you guys are getting, more than you're getting paid. And that's not right, John. So I, I think you and your dad need to get your pictures aligned of wh where we are and where we're going. And if you can't get alignment on that, then I think your dad's got a wrong situation here and you're probably not going to want to work there. And... Um, you know that that that's you know you you have proven that you can make eighty thousand in the marketplace. So you didn't like the other place, but the income was different, and so you know how to do an eighty thousand dollar job somewhere. And uh, that doesn't mean you're worth eighty to this company. If this company pays what you do driving a truck and doing invoices fifty five or sixty five, then that's what you're worth, and that's what you get paid, and that's starting at the bottom. And then after you drive the truck and run the invoices for a while and get to meet some of the customers and start handling some of the stuff your dad's doing, then you move towards the ownership and move up in leadership and so on. So there we go. That's how we do it. But I think you need to sit down with your dad and mom. I'm guessing your mom, since she comes down there and camps out, probably has some say in this. So I want both of them to hear the whole conversation. I think that's probably wisdom. And, I, I, and you just you start with gratitude. I'm grateful. Thank you. It's been a fun ride, but I started this with one thing in mind. You started it with another in mind, and I'm living your dream, not mine. And making half what I used to make ain't cool. When you're paying the guy next to me doing the same job more money, that's not cool. We're not going there. So there you go. Good question, sir. Good question.